When something terrible occurs, we often try to make sense of it. We ask, why did this have to happen? This is especially true when the tragedy was the result of an unfortunate twist of fate, a natural disaster. Catherine Patterson's novel, Bridge to Terabithia, is an attempt to make sense of an inconceivable situation, one few of us are ever prepared for. Writing a story is about answering a question. So that was what Patterson set out to do. She wanted to understand what we're supposed to do in the aftermath of a tragedy. What can we learn after we have suffered a great irreparable loss? How can we go on? What she ended up creating was a story that gave the readers a rehearsal for the pains of life. But it wasn't simply Patterson's story. Bridge to Terabithia was about her son, David, as a child. When David grew up, he adapted his mother's story, his story, and the story of his childhood best friend, turning it from a book in literature study class to one of the highest grossing movies of 2007, a year that included Spider-Man 3, Transformers, and The Simpsons movie. Lisa Christina Hill was eight years old on August 14th, 1974. She was with her family, mother, brother, and sister at Bethany Beach in Delaware that sunny day. On the horizon, a storm was brewing. Lisa was sitting at the edge of the water when a lightning bolt tore through the heavens and struck her. In an instant, Lisa, David Patterson's best friend, was killed. Since second grade, David and Lisa were close companions. David had a lot of trouble adjusting to the new class. It was Lisa that he found solace in. They developed a relationship that was unusual for children their age, where boys tended to hang out with boys and girls with girls. They would spend their time playing imaginative games behind the house in the forest and feeling comfortable enough to tell each other their thoughts. While the whole community of Tacoma Park, Maryland grieved for the loss of Lisa, David took the news as well as a boy his age could. His mother remembered him crying, knowing there was nothing she or anyone else could do to bring her son's friend back. In the following months, Catherine Patterson wrote Bridge to Terabithia, a story about an artistic fifth grader, Jesse Aaron, and his neighbor, Leslie Burke, an eccentric and affable tomboy. Even with an overlay of fiction, Bridge to Terabithia was undoubtedly a story about David and Lisa. When she finished writing the book, she read it to her son. She wanted his approval because it was ultimately his story to tell. One can only imagine that David was as moved as the millions of kids that will soon read it. A major change that the editors requested was that Leslie Burr cannot die by a lightning strike. This was a case of where reality is stranger than fiction. The editor suggested that the death had to be caused by a more likely circumstance. It needed to be believable. The change was made and, spoiler alert, Leslie's death would come from drowning in a creek after swinging from a rope within the kingdom of Terabithia, a realm the two children had created for themselves. The novel was published on October 21st 1977, by Thomas Y. Corwell Co. It would win Katherine Patterson her first Newbery Awards, an award given to the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children. Patterson had written Bridge to Terabithia as an attempt to answer a question, but when children started asking her why Leslie had to die, she forced back the urges to cry because she didn't have the answer, even though she was the writer. People began to find their own answers, or, as Patterson puts it, people brought their own lives to the book, their own images that creates it. With all the attention, Bridge to Terabithia began to receive some criticisms regarding the moral of the novel, becoming one of the most frequently banned and challenged books in the United States. There were references to witchcraft, atheism, satanism, and there was an ample amount of swearing. On top of all that, many adults didn't want to put their children through such a heartbreaking story. Over the years, Patterson would hear people telling her that after facing an emotional experience, 
they would reach for the pages of Bridge to Terabithia. In certain cases, people have given the book to children like David, who have experienced the loss of someone they loved. Patterson sadly believes that giving the book after the tragic event may be too late. Bridge to Terabithia was a book to be read before that. It was an emotional practice. It was not meant to upset the children, but prepare them for the sadness and disappointments they have to face ahead. While Bridge to Terabithia faced resistance, it also became a tool for English studies in many schools around the world, including Ireland, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the Philippines, Ecuador, the United Kingdom, Costa Rica, Panama, South Africa, and the United States. From 1984 to 1992, the Walt Disney Company and PBS teamed up to produce a made-for-TV anthology based on critically acclaimed children's books. The series was called Wonderworks, and it included such hits as Anne of Green Gables, Chronicles of Narnia, and another of Katherine Patterson's work, Jacob have I loved. On February 5th, 1985, Wonderworks released the adaptation of Bridge to Terabithia. The 57-minute film was shot in Edmonton, Alberta. While Patterson got writing credits, the script was written mostly by executive producer Nancy Sackett. However, the main criticism with the made-for-TV version was that the performance from the young actors were weak and unconvincing. On top of that, the dialogue was obviously dubbed over and gave off the impression of low production value. In 2007, David Patterson spoke about the 1985 Wonderworks version and said that the film is like the crazy cousin in a mental hospital that nobody talks about. Neither his mother nor himself were much involved with the project or even happy with the result. At points, David felt guilty that now he was getting famous from the death of his best friend. He graduated from the Catholic University of America in 1989 and pursued a career as a playwright with over two dozen plays published. Additionally, he holds the record for having three plays premiere on the same month in New York. As a form of healing and honoring Lisa and all the fortune she has given him, David approached his mother and asked for the right to adapt her story of Jesse Aarons and Leslie Burke. Her mother granted his wish not because it was his story, but because of his abilities as a playwright. With the confidence and blessing of his mother, David went off to translate the emotional story from page to screen, having already seen how it could turn out. The adaptation became a project that would consume him for 17 years. He wanted to do it right. Staying as true to his mother's story as possible, David didn't have the easiest time writing or selling the screenplay. At many points, he found that the story was too close to him. He approached screenwriter Jeff Stockwell to co-write the script as he could offer an outsider perspective. What was most important to David was the spirit of the story, and adapting a novel that spent so much time in a character's head was not easy. Selling the script posed another hurdle. Many production companies had a problem with Leslie's death. In some cases, the executives even suggested to David that perhaps she didn't have to die, and that Leslie can simply fall into a light coma, and then she'll wake up. David took the role as a co-producer to ensure such a change would not happen at any stage of the process. But it was the president of Walden Media, Carrie Garnett, that suggested Gabor Cuspo to direct the movie. If you don't know Gabor Cuspo as a director or a musician, then you would most likely know him as the co-creator of Nickelodeon's Rugrats and animator of Hanna-Barbera. Cuspo had an interesting career, but he had yet to direct a live-action movie. This was not a concern for Garnett, who saw the little kid inside Cuspo and knew that he would have the perfect approach. According to producer Lauren Levine, Cuspo was inspired by the opportunity to create Terabithia. He wanted to approach it in a Tim Burton or Terry Gilliam type of way, going for a creative representation that went beyond the usual cliches of an imaginary environment. This got everyone very excited. Casting, however, was a difficult process and required compromise. 
Kuspo didn't have any particular actors in mind when he set out on the search, so that opened the doors to discover new talents. Anna Sophia Robb had been a fan of the story and wrote a letter to Kuspo and other decision makers of the film expressing her love for the book and the character of Leslie. Before casting began, Rob met with Levine to discuss the role. In that meeting, Levine was convinced that Rob would be perfect. She had the enthusiasm and the magical presence, the spark that was Leslie. Kuspo was on board and Anna Sophia Rob was the first to be cast in the movie. Finding the perfect Jesse was more of a challenge. It was difficult finding a young actor that could go through the transformation of an isolated introvert to someone who exhibits courage and leadership along with the imaginative whimsy needed. Josh Hutcherson was not the first choice, but won the job because of his chemistry with Rob. The leads in the character in the movie were a few years older than the characters in the novel, but Kuspo said that the change was perhaps advantageous as the story borders on the idea of an innocent first love, and upping the age allowed that theme to rise to the surface a bit more. The movie began production on February 20th, 2006, with a budget of 20 to 25 million dollars. In 60 days, they completed principal photography. Bridge to Terabithia was the last film for cinematographer Michael Chapman, who had been behind the camera for such classics as Taxi Driver, The Fugitive, and Space Jam. Chapman said he wanted this movie to be his last because he wanted to end his career with a happy experience. Post-production took 10 weeks to complete and Kuspo made every effort to keep the special effects minimal. Working with Weta Digital, Peter Jackson's company famous for producing the special effects for the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Kuspo had 100 team members working on the project with many of them on set during production to help create the unique creatures of Terabithia. Perhaps the special effects got too much of a spotlight. This was a criticism during the marketing phase of the movie. As you may know, a trailer for a movie is often created by a separate organization that take clips here and there from the movie. The trailer for Bridge to Terabithia was laden with special effects moment to a point where many consider it to be false marketing. If you have read the book, the majority of the story takes place in the real world and is mainly a relationship between two preteens. Many who were loyal to the book were appalled by how the story they've loved was being presented on the screen. It was a gross attempt at trying to sell computer-generated effects as opposed to the unpretentious story of loss. When Katherine Patterson saw the film, she cried. In fact, she cries every time she sees it. She sang praises to the cast and was impressed that such a movie was possible within the indie movie budget. She also spoke about the sacrifices and changes necessary in the film, none of which spoiled her taste for it. She regarded her son for standing his ground and keeping the movie as loyal to the novel as he could. Many writers can't stand to watch the adaptation of their novels because it feels so far removed from what they have created. Beside the age of the characters and the physical appearance of Leslie, perhaps the most notable change from the book was the time period, as the movie took place in a more modern era where internet and cell phones exist. Bridge to Terabithia was released on February 16, 2007, and earned a total domestic gross of over $82 million, $137 million worldwide. The movie cemented Anna Sophia Robb and Josh Hutcherson as young stars and household names. Additionally, it brought the novel back onto the New York Times bestsellers list, which Katherine Patterson commented on the misnomer that when you sell your film rights, no one would buy the book again. Lastly, the movie brought closure for David Patterson, who's always thinking in the back of his mind about his friend Lisa and how death lies behind every beautiful moment. Every adaptation has a unique story. If there's a book to a movie that you're interested in learning more about, let me know in the comments below. For more ideas and inspirations for writers and creatives, please subscribe.